Assalam o Alaikum. IUPAC in 2013 made some modifications in its organic compounds nomenclature. Although its blue book is not yet public, but a summary of its new rules can be found online. Today I and Roshan Ali will try to explain those new rules to you with examples. The name of an organic compound can be subdivided into different parts. First let's join Roshan Ali's class. He is going to show the different parts of an organic compound. Come with me. As that guy told you that the organic compound name can be subdivided into different parts. So let me show you those different parts. These are the different parts of an organic compound that it may contain. All the substituents attached to the parent chain are called secondary prefixes. These may include bromo, chloro, ethyl, methyl, propyl, or it may not be there in an organic compound. Second part of an organic compound is called primary prefix. Some of the compounds can be in ring form. So for those compounds, the primary prefix is added. These primary prefixes include cyclo, bicyclo, tricyclo, spiro, bispiro, etc. This part is also not necessary in an organic compound because there are many compounds that are not in the ring form. So in those compounds, this part will be missing. The third and most important part is the root. That is the main part of the compound that is compulsory in an organic compound. These shows the number of carbon atoms in an organic compound. For example, myth represents one carbon, it represents two carbon and so on. The next part is called primary suffix. Primary suffix depends on the saturation of the compound. If it is fully saturated, then it is called in. If there is a double bond, then the double bond can be represented with in. And a triple bond is represented with yan. And at the last, there is a secondary suffix in an organic name. This part is used to represent the most senior functional group that is present in an organic compound. For example, for CWOH, you will use oic acid. And similarly, other suffixes include amide, al, on, ol, etc. And this part is also not always there in an organic compound name. If an organic compound contains a functional group, then this part will be included in the organic compound name. Otherwise, it will be missing there. These are the two main parts that must be there in an organic compound because without these two parts, an organic compound name is not possible. One of them is this, which includes myth, it, prop, that is the number of carbon atoms in an organic compound, and the primary suffix, which includes an, in, aryan, which shows saturation or unsaturation of the compound. An organic compound can contain only one from this section. It could only contain myth or it or prop or some other root, but it cannot contain two, for example, myth and it both. It's not possible in an organic compound. However, in the second part, that is an, in, or yan, either it will contain an, which shows saturation or saturated compounds, or it may contain two of these, that is in or yan. So there is a possibility that a compound has both double bond as well as triple bond. So that compound name will contain both in as well as yan. All other parts are optional in an organic compound's name. If they are there in the structure, the name will contain those parts. Otherwise, they will be missing in the name of the organic compound. From this part also, the compound can contain only a single one. It could either be an oic acid or amide or al or on or ol. It cannot contain two main functional groups. All other functional groups will be considered as secondary prefixes. As far as the secondary prefix is concerned, the compound can contain many of them and they will be arranged in alphabetic order in an organic compound's name. Let me show you an example here. This is the simplest example of an organic compound, that is methane. Myth is from the root part and an is from the primary suffix. So these are the two compulsory parts that all the organic compounds contain. Without these two parts, an organic compound cannot be constructed. Another example is oct one in 3 yan In this compound, you can see the root is oct and the primary suffix consists of two suffixes that is in for double bond and yan for triple bond. 
This name contains all the subparts of the organic name. In this, you can see the red colored part of the organic name is from the secondary prefix, while the blue color cyclo is from the primary prefix. That black color oct is the root part. The green color two in is from the primary suffix, while one ol is the secondary suffix of the compound. Now let's come towards the root part of the organic compound names. The root part of the name must contain one of the term from this list depending on the number of carbon atoms in the parent chain. For example, a parent chain with five carbons will be called as pent. And if it is saturated, it will be combined with the primary prefix ane, that is pentane. If it contains double bond, then it will be called as pentene. And if it contains triple bond, it will be called as pentine. This list contains root names for the number of carbon atoms from 1 to 10. What if it contains 11 or more carbon atoms? These are the names that will be used at the root part of the organic compound names if it contains 11 or more carbon atoms in its parent chain. For example, if it contains 40 carbons present in its parent chain, then the root name will be called tetracontane if it is saturated. If it is unsaturated and it contains double bond, that will be called as tetracontine. And for triple bond, that will be tetracontine. If there are 100 carbon atoms in the pen, it will be called as hectane. And for 1000, the term chelian is used. What if it contains 87 carbons, 93, or 105, or 276, etc.? To learn about them, please watch my other video. The link of that video is given in the description. Welcome back. You just learned about the root part of the name. Now let me show you the names of different functional groups. An organic compound may or may not contain functional groups. It may contain one or more of these functional groups. If it contains one group from this list then the name of that part is taken from this list and is used as a secondary suffix at the end of the organic compound's name. If it contains more than one groups from this list, then the one with higher priority will be used as secondary suffix, while the rest of the groups will be used as secondary prefixes, arranged in alphabetical order. Remember, this list is arranged seniority-wise from top to bottom. For example, carboxylic group is senior to aldehyde group and aldehyde is senior to alcohol, and so on. One thing more, as you can see, there are two different names for the same group. For example C, double, O, H, has been named as carboxylate in the first row, while in the second row its name is O8. The reason behind this is that, in some compound the carbon atom of C, O, O, H is not the part of the parent while in others it could be a part of the main parent chain. In this given list I have highlighted the carbon in black where it is not the part of the functional group, instead it is a part of the parent chain. For example in case of O8. However, on the other hand, the carbon atom has been highlighted in red color, when it is the part of the functional group and is not counted in the parent. One such example is carboxylate, where carbon is the part of the functional group. I hope you understood what I mean. Now, let me show you the steps of naming an organic compound. As Roshan Ali showed you in the last slide that organic compound's name is composed of different parts. Here I am showing you once again with one additional part in the beginning of the name, enclosed in parenthesis. You can see the first part of the name highlighted in yellowish-orange color. This part shows the stereochemistry of the compound that is E and Z system or S and R system. The first step in naming any organic compound is to determine the principal characteristic group to be cited as the secondary suffix. It is also called the functional group. For example C, O, O, H group for which the suffix used is O ec acid. This part comes at the end of the name. The second step is to identify the parent hydride to be cited as the root in the IUPAC name. For example, this is the parent you identified. In the third step, number the parent hydride from both the ends and select the most appropriate direction. Now name the parent hydride based on the number of atoms it contain. Also determine if unsaturation is present or not. For example, the given structure's root name is Undercur because it has 11 carbons. Also it has got a double bond, therefore, the primary suffix here will be ene. Now combine all the main three parts of the name that is the root name, 
primary suffix and secondary suffixes names which in this example are undercur, ene and oek acid. In this step, identify the substituents and arrange them in alphabetical order. These names will be considered as secondary prefixes. For example, this structure has got bromo, chloro and methyl groups. Then count the number of each kind of substituent and use corresponding multiplicative prefixes before the names of those substituents. In this example we have two bromine, that's why we will call it dibromo. At the end, determine the chirality centers and other stereogenic units, such as double bonds, and add stereo descriptors. For example both the bromine are on the same side of the double bond in the given structure, that's why you use Z or cis. Also the number 3 means that the double bond is at carbon number 3. At the end combine all the parts of the name, so that you get the complete IUPAC name of the compound. Let's now explain each step one by one. Suppose this is the chemical structure given. According to step one, we have to identify the senior characteristic group among all the characteristic groups present in the structure. In this structure I can see three functional groups that is carboxylic group highlighted in red color, aldehyde group shown in blue, and hydroxyl group in green color. Just go to the table and find which one is senior among these three groups. You will see that carboxylic group is the senior most among these three groups. So secondary suffixes part of the IUPAC name will be OEC acid, while hydroxyl and aldehyde groups will become secondary prefixes. In step 2 you have to identify the parent hydride. A hydride to be used as the root part of the name is called the parent hydride. The parent hydride can be identified following a specific criteria. This criteria has to be followed step by step in order. According to the criteria number 1, if a compound contains functional groups, then the parent hydride is the one that is attached to the most senior characteristic group. For example, in this given structure there are two chains. The chain on the left of the oxygen atom is attached to the carboxylic group, while the chain to the right of the oxygen atom has hydroxyl group. As we know carboxylic group is senior to the hydroxyl group, therefore the chain on the left of oxygen is selected as the parent hydride. As this chain contains five carbons therefore the root word used will be pent. Also it is saturated that's why it is penten. The secondary suffix here for the carboxylic acid group is oic acid. Therefore the name of the parent hydride will be pentanoic acid. The rest of the part of the compound will be considered as a substituent attached to the parent hydride. If the first criteria fails to decide about the parent hydride, or maybe it is not applicable to the given structure, then use the second criteria to identify the parent hydride. According to the second criteria, look for the chain that is bound with maximum number of senior characteristic groups. For example, in this structure, there are six chains. The main functional group in this structure is the hydroxyl group. As you can see all the chains are attached to the same functional group, therefore the first criteria cannot decide about the parent chain. Among these six chains, we will have to select the chain, that is connected to maximum number of functional groups. Chain 1, chain 2 and chain 5, all have three hydroxyl groups. Chain 3 has got only one hydroxyl group, while chain 4 has got the most number of hydroxyl groups, that is it contains four hydroxyl groups. So this will be selected as our parent hydride. As this chain contains 10 carbons, therefore our root word will be deca. This third criteria is used to select the parent chain if both the previous criterias either fail or cannot be applied to the given structure. According to this criteria if ring is present in the compound then you have to select the ring as your parent hydride. Because ring is considered as senior to the chain, in case functional group is absent in the chain. If no ring is present then go to the next criteria. Here we will go to the next step. About the steps of naming a ring containing compounds, I will make another video. So. Please wait for my next video about ring compounds nomenclature. I will give link in the description of the video below. So now let's go to step D. 
if you have reached this stage and still no choice is made, or, the above criterias do not apply to your structure, then, follow this criteria. According to this criteria, select the chain with more number of atoms, means select the longest chain. For example this compound has got three chains. Chain 1 contains 10 carbons, while chain 2 has got 9 carbon atoms. And the third chain contains only 6 carbons. So, the straight chain with red colored numbers is selected as our parent chain. As this chain contains 10 carbons, that's why the root word used for this will be, deca. In case there is a tie among two or more chains with similar length, then apply this rule. According to this rule, you have to select the chain with maximum number of multiple bonds. For example, this compound contains three chains. Two of these three chains have equal length and are longer than the third chain. So there is a tie between these two chains. If you look and compare the number of multiple bonds in both the chains, you will see that the straight chain contains three double bonds, while the other chain has got two double bonds. Therefore straight chain will be taken as parent hydride. This straight chain contains 11 carbons. Therefore the root word of the name will be undica. The primary suffix here will be ene, because it contains unsaturation. In this step I am going to explain the criteria you just learnt in the previous slide. According to the criteria you have to select the chain that contains multiple bond. For example, this compound has three chains, two of the chains have equal length. We will have to select the chain that has the multiple bonds. So this chain has got multiple bond and we will select this as our parent chain. If one chain has double bond and the other has triple bond, then you will have to select the one with double bond. For example, in this compound, two chains have equal length, one with double bond and another with triple bond. Here we will have to select this chain because double bond is senior to triple bond. If one chain has one multiple bond and the other chain has more, then select the one with more multiple bonds. For example, in this compound, two chains have equal length. One of the chain has two multiple bonds while the other chain has got only one multiple bond. So we will have to select the chain that has more multiple bonds. If both has same number of multiple bonds, then select the one with more double bonds. For example, in this compound, there are two chains with equal length. One chain has two double bonds while the other chain has one double bond. So we will have to select the chain with more double bonds. If both the chains have same number of same kind of multiple bonds, then number both the chains, select the one that has lower locant for unsaturation. For example, in this compound, there are two chains with equal length and both of them has one double bond. We will have to select the chain where when we number the chain, the multiple bond gets the lower locant. If still indecisive, then select the chain with lower locant for the senior group. Let's for example draw a structure. In this structure there are two chains of equal length. Both of them have same functional group, same number of times. If such a situation arises then follow this rule. According to this rule we will select this chain as our parent chain because the functional group has got lower locant on this chain. If still there is a tie among different chains and there are double and triple bonds present in the chains, then select that parent chain which has got lower locant for the unsaturations. Let me explain you with a structure. This structure has two chains with same length and same number of double bonds. The only difference is that, in this chain the double bond is at carbon number 1, while in this chain the double bond is at carbon number 3. Therefore, we will select this chain as our parent chain because the double bond is at lower position in this chain. If still there is a tie, then select the parent chain according to this criteria. This criteria says that you have to select that chain as your parent chain that has got more number of substituents. For example, in this compound, there are two chains that are longer than the other chains. Both these chains have equal length. The difference is in the number of substituents attached to them. The chain with red underlined has four substituents, while the chain with green underlined has two substituents. So the chain underlined in red color will be our parent chain. If number of substituents is also same, then select the parent with lowest set of substituents locants. What does that mean? 
Let me explain with an example. In this structure, two chains are competing for parent chain. Both have same length and same number of substituents are attached to them. According to this rule, you have to compare their locants one by one. Number both the chains so you can find the locants of the substituents. I have numbered them till the common point because both have common chain after that. Now write down the locants for the substituents of the chain with blue numbers. Methyl at position 2, another methyl at the same position, then ethyl at position 6, and then a complex branch at position 7. Now come to the green number chain. The first substituent is at position 2. So it's not different from chain 1. Now go to the second substituent. It is at position 3. So here is the difference. The chain with blue numbers has lower locant. That's why this chain will be our parent hydride. Let's see if we can make any decision about this structure using the last criteria. Let's first number both the chains as we did in the last slide. Now write down the locants of both the chain substituents and compare them one by one. The position of first substituent is same. The position of the second substituent is also the same. Same is the case at third substituent. Same here. You saw we cannot made any selection according to the last criteria. If no decision is made, then write down the substituent names in alphabetical order including their locants. Compare the locants one by one and select the chain with lower locant at first point of difference. First compare the first locant. So here is the difference. The chain with green numbers has got lower locant. That's why this is our parent chain. If no difference in locants, for example in the structure given. First let's try criteria number 2i and 2j. First number both the chains. Now compare the locants according to criteria number 2i. Bromine comes at position 2. Chlorine is also at position number 2. So there is no difference in the position of the substituents. Now use criteria 2j. Same situation here, no difference. Now you have to use this criteria. According to it, you have to select the chain that has substituents that come alphabetically earlier. As bromine is alphabetically earlier than chlorine, therefore our parent hydride is the chain with bromine attached to it. Well, you just learnt about how to identify the parent hydride. Now let me show you which end to use to start numbering from. There is a specific criteria for this purpose. You have to follow that criteria in sequence. Criteria number one. According to this criteria, you always have to start numbering from the end closest to the functional group. As this is our principal characteristic group, therefore, we will start numbering from this side, that is, from right to left. Let me give you another example to explain this criteria more clearly. Let's suppose this is the structure. In this structure, this OH group is the functional group. As this is closer to this end, that's why we will start numbering from this carbon, that is, from left to right. Criteria number two. According to this criteria, number your chain from the end closest to the multiple bond. That could be either a double bond or a triple bond. Let's explain this with a structure. This structure has two OH groups. Whether you number this chain from left or from the right side, the functional group falls at carbon number three. Here, we will follow this second criteria. In this structure, we have two multiple bonds. If we start from right side, the multiple bond falls at carbon number 4. If we start from left end, then multiple bond falls at position 1. We will have to number the chain from left to right. Let me give you another example without a functional group. In this structure, the left end is closest to the multiple bond. So we will number the chain from the left side.
What if you have a structure like this, in which both, the functional groups as well as the multiple bonds, fall at the same positions from both ends? You became confused now. Don't worry. We have got another rule for this. Rule number three. According to this rule, we will number the chain from the end closest to the double bond. As you can see, the carbon at the left end is closest to the double bond, therefore we will number the chain from the double bond side. If a compound has double bonds at the same positions from both the ends, then follow rule number four. According to this rule, we have to number the chain from the end closest to the first substituent, so that it gets the lowest locant. This structure has bromine as substituent. Bromine comes at position five from left side, while it comes at a higher position from the right end. So we number this chain from the left side. If the first substituent falls on the same position from both the ends of the chain, just like in this structure, think about it. Do you have any solution? Let me explain. Here too, we will use the same rule that you used in the last slide. But this time, we will have to look for the next substituent. The next substituent is chlorine from both the ends. From left side, it is at position 4, while from right, it happens to be at 7th position. From this we conclude that this chain must be numbered from left side. If all the substituents are at the same position from both the ends then follow rule number 5. According to this rule, you have to number the chain from the end where it gets lowest locant for the substituent that comes alphabetically earlier. Let me explain it. First you have to number the chain from one end and write the substituents in alphabetical order including their locants. Then number the chain from the other side and write the substituents in alphabetical order including their locants. Now compare their locants one by one. As you can see, bromine is at position 2 from left side. While the same bromine is at position 9 from the right side. Therefore we will number the chain from left side. Because alphabetically first substituent gets the lower locant from that end. Let me explain the previous rule in simpler words with a simple example. According to this rule, number the chain from the end, where it gets the lowest locant for the substituent that comes alphabetically earlier. For example in this structure, from left side, Bromine is at position 2, while from right side, chlorine is at position 2. If that is the case, then number the chain from bromine side because bromine is alphabetically earlier than chlorine. Step number 4. Suppose this is our structure. In this step you name the parent hydride and specify any unsaturation if present. This compound's parent chain has 9 carbons, therefore the root word will be taken from nonane. As this compound contains unsaturation, therefore, the primary suffix, ane, will be dropped from nonane in favor of unsaturation. The double bond is present at fifth position while triple bond is at the position number 8. Therefore, the primary suffix will be 5-en, 8-yan. So our parent hydride's name will be non, 5 en 8 yan. Step number 5. Combine the parent name with the secondary suffix. In this example, the parent hydride is non, 5 en 8 yan. The secondary suffix is oic acid. So, the combined name will be non, 5 en 8 yan, oic acid. If instead of COOH, we had simple OH group at carbon number 2, then the name would be non, 5 en 8 yan, 2 all. Step number 6. Identify the substituents and arrange them in alphabetical order. 
For example, in this compound there are two kinds of substituents that is bromine and chlorine. Their alphabetical order is bromine and then chlorine. Step number 7. Count each of the substituents and insert the multiplicator prefixes without changing the already established order and insert locants. What does multiplicator prefixes mean? It means, if there are two bromine, then use di, if three, use tri, if four, use tetra, and for five, use penter, etc. This compound contains two bromines, therefore, we will write dibromo, and it contains only a single chlorine, therefore no multiplicator prefix is required for chloro. Now insert the locants. Our secondary prefix part of the name will become, 5, 6, dibromo, 2 chloro. Step number 8. Determine chirality centers and other stereogenic units, such as double bonds geometry, and add these stereo descriptors before the secondary prefix part of the name. What does stereo descriptors mean? It means, specify the geometry of the double bonds, and chirality of the chiral centers if present in the compound. To show the geometry of the double bonds, use the classical, cis-trans, system, or modern, EZ system. For chiral centers, use, RS, system. Also include locants of the double bonds and chiral center as prefix to the letters Z, A, R, and S, etc. In this compound we have a double bond at position 5. Both the bromine are at the same position. So you can write, cis, or the modern Z. So write the descriptor as 5Z, and closed in parenthesis, before the name of the compound. Step number 9. Combine all the parts of the name. These are the different parts of the name. We have already determined all these parts for the compound given. Don't forget to put a comma between two numbers. Always put a dash between a number and character. Put a dash between a character and a number. And merge two words together. Now let's combine all the parts of the names of this compound. Our name will look like this. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please, do subscribe both of our channels. This channel is, SciArt Fun, and our another channel name is, SciArt Fun, World. Please, press the bell icon, so that you get the notifications of every video we upload. Please, comment your opinions about this video. Now we are going to play volleyball. See you. Goodbye. Have a good day. Bye. Take care and bye.